Okay, you lovely lot. Here I am again. And um, hopefully you will be joining us with the Zoom, or you might have already had the Zoom, and we'll have already been through this, but just in case you don't manage to, here we have this week's lesson. So, question number one, el plato estaba sucio. How is this slide different from last week's? Prizes for the first people to answer that question. Can you spot the difference? Okay, I'm going to take you through these slides. How are we going to progress today? What is it that we are going to do, apart from add a question mark onto that question? And we're going to check that you're able to recall last week's vocabulary and grammar points. Now, you might want to revise it first. That's up to you. But like I said, we're putting something in your head and then we're pushing it right deep down so it doesn't come back out again. We need to keep revisiting this vocabulary as much as possible to help it embed in your long-term memory. Okay, we're going to increase your vocabulary of at the restaurant, so we're going to build that. We're also looking particularly at your reading skills. We're, we're working a lot of the time, we're working around a grade three and four, and we'll carry on doing that. But every now and again, we're going to boost your grades up to possible five, six, seven by building up your tenses. So we're going to be doing some tense work today, not a lot. Not a lot, just a little bit of a reminder. That's going to come back again next week. That's what we're going to build on for next week. So we're just going to have a bit of a refresher. And we're also going to prove that we can understand people's stories about trips to a restaurant by applying some really good reading strategies. And what that's the main aim of today. It's really, I'm calling it build your reading muscle. How hard are you? How tough are you? How resilient are you? And how able are you to just get a text? And even though it's hard, break it down into bit by bit and put it back together again. You'd be surprised at how these strategies can really, really help you understand more and more. Okay. Now you'll notice that you've got five tasks to do today. Task one, task two, bit of vocab I'm going to talk you through. Uh, task Where's the next one? Task three. That's not that step. That's not a task. Task three is there. Task four is further down. Okay, on the same page. And there is task five. Sorry, in task six. Six tasks. They're what's going on your piece of paper that will get sent back to me in a photo. So six tasks. Now, what does that mean? Let's go back to the beginning. So here we go. Task one. Odd one out. Which is the odd one out and why? If you come up with a good enough reason, I'll let you have the point. Uh, let's do number one together. Jamón, atún, gambas and pescado. So we've got jamón, ham, atún, tuna, gambas. Yes, prawns, I can hear you. And pescado, fish. Which is the odd one out? Well, I'd say it's ham because the rest are all types of fish or seafood. Okay, but if you come up with another excuse or reason and it's good enough, then I'll let you have it. So it's odd one out for task number one. That's all vocabulary you've seen before. Task number two, we're translating these into English. Five sentences. Remember we did isimo. What did isimo mean? That's right, really, really, really. So las gambas, we've just seen them. The prawns están are deliciosísimas. Really, really delicious. Okay, so that's number one done for you. You have four more of those to do on your piece of paper. Task two, you might need to go back over that. I actually have to admit something that I hate to admit. I was wrong last week. I spelt something wrong. Verissimo is really, really cold. Okay, it's been a long time since I've made a mistake in Spanish and I hate admitting I'm wrong, but I did make a mistake. That's how you spell it. Please correct that from last week. I will put myself in detention again. Right, this is just a reminder slide. Have a read over it, just check that you've remembered it. You will recognize this from the wall in my classroom. And I'm just gonna talk you through that. You know about the verb garden, you know about getting any verb, take the end off and change it for something else to change who and when the action is being done. And we're gonna focus on two today. We're gonna to focus on the two past. We have the preterite, the did something, the imperfect, the was, were, used to tense, okay? Both past, right? It's really tricky to understand that. So we're not going to expect to teach you this perfectly while you're in lockdown. But we're just going to keep chipping away, helping you 
get some clarity around this and understand it a bit better. So let's take this one here. Don't forget to line these up if you're not sure who's what. Let's take the verb hablar. And if you're in the lesson in the Zoom, we'll do this by hand. Uh, hablar, take off the AR. Habl and hablé. I, I did speak, I spoke. Hablé. You spoke, hablaste. He spoke, habló. We spoke, hablamos. You spoke, hablasteis. And they spoke, hablaron. However, if we wanted to use the imperfect, the used to, same verb, take off the AR. I, you, he, we, you, they. Hablaba, hablabas, hablaba, hablábamos, habláis, hablaban. Practice that. Uh, let's take a different verb instead. So we could use the verb estar, to be. Estar isn't, it, it used to be. So you could use it used to be. Estaba, estaba, I used to be. You used to be, it used to be, we used to be, you used to be, they used to be. Estaba, estabas, estaba, estábamos, estabais, estaban. There, I've zoomed in on them. That's the imperfect, was, were, used to. That's for AR verbs. And then we've got ER and IR. So I used to eat, um, I used to eat chips, comía patatas fritas. I used to eat meat, comía uh, carne. I used to eat fish, comía pescado. You might want to say I'm a vegetarian. I used to eat meat, I don't eat meat anymore. Soy vegetariana, comía carne. No, ahora no como carne. Okay, used to there's the endings. Take off this, add the new endings. And the did, the preterite, the did form. Okay, so I went to a restaurant and I did eat some chips. There's comer, to eat. Fui a un restaurante, comí patatas fritas. I spoke to my friends. Hablé con mis amigos. We sang, cantamos, we danced, bailamos, and we drank Coca-Cola. Beber, bebimos, Coca-Cola. We did what we did do, what we used to do. Don't worry if that's not 100% clear. If you're in the lesson, we can ask some questions. But in the meantime, just keep going over that and chanting them just to help you uh, get them clearer in your mind. And there's a little screen there that helps you understand a little bit more the difference between the preterite did and the imperfect used to or was and were. Okay, so you can see how these could be really useful for describing a trip to a restaurant. Next slide is the main body of the lesson. So it's about you and your reading skills at a higher grade. Okay, do so you look at this and uh, number one, you don't get overwhelmed by something just because it's a big text. I know what you like. You're looking at it thinking, uh oh, there's loads of words. Take it slowly. Okay, slow down. Just read through. So let's take it step by step. We are building your reading muscles today. Step one, read it out loud a few times. So you will read it literally out loud. If you're embarrassed because your nan's come to visit, then read it out loud in your head. Okay, but it should look like this. Vinimos aquí el sábado pasado, past, para celebrar las bodas de plata de mis padres. You're thinking, I haven't got a clue what this says. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Keep reading it. Keep saying it out loud two or three times. This is a strategy that will get you really good at reading in Spanish. Trust me. Cuando llegamos, había mucha gente y por eso tuvimos que esperar media hora. So off you go. You'll read that by yourselves two or three times, preferably nice and loud. Step two. This is the bit you like, identify the English words or the ones that are really similar. So, Sabado is not really that similar, but let's call it Saturday. Not much here, is there? Animated. Obviously, if, you're, if your vocab in English is good, it's going to make it easier for you. The more words you know in English, the more words you know in Spanish. Enchanting. The speciality. There aren't very many cognates in this at all. Okay, allergic. So I'll leave you to find out a couple more. That's step two. So you're finding the English words or the words that are similar to English. Step three. Okay, look for the Spanish words you already know. So as you've read through it a few times, some of those words might have jumped out at you already. 
So you should know Saturday, celebrate, parents, um, animated we've mentioned. You might recognize Mui and Limpio. You should know Casa, Padre. Okay, so you're gonna go through that. That's your step two, sorry, step three. Step four, try to, and this is the bit that's really advanced. This is what's going to move you up from a level three and four, sorry, grade three, four to higher. Can you identify where you think the verbs are? Venir is to come, we came last Saturday, celebrate, llegar to arrive. Okay, see if you can find any verbs, recommend. I'll give you that one. Pedir is to ask for. Okay, right, so that's step four, and you still, at this stage, you still won't understand everything that you've read. That's okay. We're going to do a task, so task three, right? You're going to find and translate these sentences. Now, this shouldn't be too long, because you've already taken too hard, sorry. To celebrate is there, so you know that silver wedding anniversary is going to be somewhere near celebrate. We had to wait, think about time. He made a mistake. This is the grammar bit. Wait a minute. He made a mistake he did make. So I'm looking for, and this is really key here. I'm looking for something that ends in either EO or O because he did it. He made a mistake. So to find that, I'm going to use my knowledge of grammar and ideally, is there anything there? There we go. There's an accent. Oh, with an accent, it means he did something. Okay. She was a stabba. Look out for that. And we didn't leave a tip. We've got that word from last lesson. That was propina. Watch out for that word propina. Okay. Then you're going to do task four. Was the food positive, negative, or both? How was the service? What about the price? What about the atmosphere, the ambiente, and the cleanliness? Okay, positive, negative, or both? Okay, and I've only got two minutes left to help you through these next two, so I'm going to whiz on. This, task five, same thing this time. You're going to read it out loud by yourselves. You're going to look for the English words. You're going to look for the words that you already know. You're going to look at the grammar, look for the verbs. You see the abia, there's an imperfect ending. Fuimos, we went. Okay, pick out the verbs. And then you're going to do this task five, is putting those pictures in order. Okay, so give me the numbers for task five, put them in the right order. And finally, you're going to answer these questions in English. What you will find is you don't have to understand the whole text to be able to answer these questions. Sometimes it is easier, much easier to answer it once you've read the questions than when you haven't got the questions in front of you. You do not need to understand everything in the text to be able to get the right answers. This is about your resilience. This is about you not worrying about what you don't know. It's about taking your reading step by step by step to just answer the questions that you've been asked to the best of your ability. So we're gonna aim for maybe five out of eight, see how you get on. Okay, and finally, we shall meet. Um, if you're on the, if you're in the lesson, then we'll save the quiz till then, we'll see how you do. We'll keep a list of who I owe chocolate to. Um, but if not, do join in and make sure you use your first name and your uh, last initial so that Mr. Smith's class as well can see who the winners are on this and we can all give you congratulations if you are the winner because you are competing against Mr. Smith's and Mrs. Yates's class because they've been given this as well so do me proud okay take care and I shall hopefully see you at 12 o'clock tomorrow but don't worry if not always send me a message on ePraise if you're stuck hope that's useful take care Stay safe. Bye.